We're Ashley and Jordan. Since May of 2019, we've been traveling the world on a mission to keep going places. COVID forced us back to the U.S., but our home country has given us a hundred new places to go. Today, we hit the highway again, the Pacific Coast Highway, on a two-week road trip up the Cali Coast. Hey, good morning guys. We are here in Santa Barbara, California, and we just stopped at a local coffee shop called Handlebar. The coffee is so good, we highly Delicious. recommend it if you're here in Santa Barbara. All right, so today is the first day of the rest of our lives, and by that, of course, I mean <laughs> today's the first day of our California Pacific Coast Highway road trip. Jordan has taken off two full weeks of work yes. for his day job. He couldn't be more thrilled, and we are just going to travel and film it and make as many videos as we can all about the California coast and all the beautiful towns there are to stop and see. Today is Santa Barbara. We are late, as per usual, to go pick up our bike rentals. We're gonna bike around the beach, around town. We have a wine tasting later, Yum. get some lunch. Handlebar was very apropos. Today is gonna be a biking <laughs> kind of day, and then this afternoon we have a whole other town we're gonna stop by. So. Let's get going. That reminds me of, uh, what's that architect in Barcelona? Gaudi. Gaudi, that's what this reminds me of. Kind of this surrealist, kind of wavy. Pretty. We are out here at Cal Coast Adventures. We've got our bike rentals, two beach cruisers, one with the cutest little basket, and we are going to bike back into town. It was a good half hour walk from the coffee shop to here. And I'll be honest, the walk isn't super pleasant, but the bike riding will be. So let's go to the beach, huh? We made it here to our first stop. We're here at the Chromatic Gate. It's really cool, this little art design. It looks like a rainbow. You can stop here and get some pictures, but we're gonna stop, check it out, and then keep going to the beach. Just bike ride right next to the beach. It's amazing. All right, so we're biking through what's called Chase Palm Park, and it's this park and a running trail, biking trail along the beach. It is so beautiful. All the sailboats just kind of like anchored out here in the water. It is so peaceful in the morning. People are running out here. It is beautiful. This is so cool, y'all. And look at all those palm trees behind me. Wow. It says like you couldn't take those big bike things on the wharf, so I'm thinking probably no bikes, which is fine. It looks really crowded, to be honest. It's a beautiful bike ride. Oh my gosh, absolutely gorgeous. Looks like there's volleyball courts over there. It's June on the coast, they call it June gloom. The marine layer takes a really long time in the day to burn off, so it's quite gray. But hopefully by this afternoon it'll be a lot prettier. Anyway, we have to go get all of our stuff out of our hotel room. So we'll bop by the hotel room, pack it up, and then it's wine time. Let's go. Lock up our bikes, pack up the car, and make it to our wine tasting on time. Bye. All right, that was a rush job. Let's go get the bikes, and let's go get some delicious vino. Nice hat. Trying to not get 
run over. Good night. Yeah, we had to uh, rush and load the car because the checkout and I had to put all our stuff in the car, which I don't usually like to do when we're traveling. I think it's okay though where we park. I also don't recommend biking one-handed and trying to film, but that's what I'm doing. Hopefully the video will turn out all right. very quick bike ride. We have made it to our wine tasting and it's time to take everything down a notch. Park the bikes. We are here at Jamie Sloan Winery. It's a gorgeous tasting room right in the heart of Santa Barbara. We have ordered two of their classic flights, which is a little bit of red, a little bit of white. I think there's even a rosé in there. We are seated in the most charming alleyway. The gorgeous architecture surrounding us. The sun has finally come out just as I predicted that it would. This is going to be incredible and it looks like our first taste is here. <laughs> Both of the classic flight. The first one is a rosé of Grenache, and we learned that Jamie Sloan, what they do is they actually source grapes from different vineyards in the Santa Barbara County area. They don't grow their own, but it allows them to kind of mix and match and make their own unique kind of wines. But everything's in Santa Barbara County, so we're gonna try the first one now. That's good. It's very, very light, but it has this like sweet kind of berry note to it. It's, uh, it's delicious. As Jordan was filming me, he goes, I really don't like talking about wine on camera because we don't know what the hell we're talking about. And I was like, true. But nonetheless, we're just going to enjoy the rest of our flight. We even got this adorable cheese box. We're going to have some snacks. The rest of it is going to be a Grenache Blanc, a Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and a red blend. And we're just going to take you through with some lovely B-roll so you don't have to hear us pretend like we're sommeliers when we're not. This one just begs for a big bowl of pasta. Just needs it. This, I think this is our last wine too, so sad. We have things to do, but this is very nice. This is the red blend. Excellent, love it. All done with wines. Jamie Sloan Winery's tasting room here in Santa Barbara was gorgeous. All the wines were incredibly drinkable. There wasn't a bad one in the bunch. My favorite was the second one, the Grenache. It was a white wine, so light. It smelled amazing. I loved that. Anyway, we're going to take a nice little walk through this paseo area, this cute little walkway to kind of walk off the rest of our wine before we hop back on the bikes. Then we're going to take a nice ride around town, see some sights. The courthouse is supposed to be beautiful, the presidio, and then it's going to be lunchtime at the public market. We are heading to the Presidio first, then we're gonna stop by the, I believe the courthouse here. It's supposed to be beautiful Spanish architecture. After that, we're gonna jump and get some lunch. Let's get going. First stop is El Presidio, which is a old uh, Spanish military outpost. There's a church in there, which is really neat looking. I just went and kind of saw that. It's actually where we were this morning, right across from Handlebar Coffee. But quick tip, if you get coffee, just go across over there, the benches. It's very cool in the shade. You can sit there and enjoy it and kind of just take in a little bit of history here in Santa Barbara. We're gonna keep going and go on to our next stop. Ah, you did this. One-handed baby. Look at that skill. Dang. I finally tried to get him and all I'm, I, I don't know if you can hear me. I'm like, I can't do both. I can't do both. I can't do both. <laughs> Almost face planted. Let's go. The courthouse here in Santa Barbara is one of the best examples of the Spanish Revival style of architecture. Spanish Revival is very popular in the 20s, reviving the Spanish colonial style. This Revival style is actually one of my favorite types of architecture, but I do think it's worth noting the most unpleasant history of Spanish colonization and conquistadors and all of that. Even as I walk through this portico, there's art up on the wall depicting Spanish colonization kind of romantically. And I don't think that's always maybe the way the Native Americans felt about it. 
nonetheless it is absolutely beautiful the park here is absolutely worth enjoying it's a gorgeous day i just always think it's important to understand our complicated history wow you guys so when you walk through the portico to get into the courtyard it is stunning you can see the mountains in the background and look behind me this place is beautiful this would be a really cool spot for a picnic enjoy the sun enjoy the sounds of the birds and take in some really really beautiful architecture all right y'all guys we came here to the santa barbara public market and inside there's a ton of different um, stalls with different types of cuisine you can get mexican food pizza thai food japanese food and what i got no surprise, is a falafel sandwich. It looked really good, it had a ton of different types of falafel you can get, like sweet potato falafel, original is regular falafel, spicy falafel, I got the spicy. Let's give it a try. The falafel is so spicy, like it's burning my tongue. You can put jalapenos in there. Wow, that's so good. Let's see what Ashley got. I chose the Corazon Cocina and it's a Mexican restaurant, lots of tacos, lots of quesadillas. Mm. I wasn't super duper hungry, so I just went with what sounded good, which is the bean and plantain combo. So it's just some really good black refried beans, some fried plantains, and some tortillas. And then I got, uh, they had all kinds of aguas frescas, all kinds of flavors, but I got the ginger lemonade with chia. Super spicy, gingery, it's delicious. Cause the sun is finally out, so now it feels like a completely different day, like a hot summer day. And this sounded refreshing. These plantains are so good. I haven't had plantains in a long time. It's very good. All right guys, lunch was delicious. I highly, highly recommend that falafel is so spicy. We're running behind schedule, so we're gonna go drop off the bikes and then pop in the car and head off to our next adventure for the rest of the yep. evening, yeah? Let's go. Okay, let's go. Pretty beautiful. Surprise! We have transported to Europe, specifically Denmark. We took a quick 45 minute drive from Santa Barbara to Solvang, California, and it is a little slice of Copenhagen or Old Town Denmark right here in California. It was founded in 1911 by a group of Danes who had gotten a 9,000 acre land grant from Mexico and they were looking to move west to get away from Midwestern winters and they settled the town of Solvang and it got national attention, I think in the 1940s for being adorable as it is. And they have sort of taken the theme and run with it. And now it attracts people from literally all over the world. I think the like Danish prince even came and visited in 2011. We have gotten our Danish treats. We just stopped over at Berkholm Bakery. There's several Danish bakeries throughout the town. We're gonna take our treat to go and just explore this very old world fairy tale town right here in California. Hey, you guys, we've been walking around here in Solvang for just a little bit, and it's interesting. I mean, you do feel a little bit, I guess, like maybe you could be in Europe, but also I think mostly you just feel like you're in Disneyland. For sure. I will say we're here on a Sunday afternoon. It is crowded. It's honestly like sensory overload. <laughs> it's very, very touristy, but hey, we're here yeah. as tourists too, so we can't complain about that, I guess. <laughs> but just to set expectations, still though, it's adorable. It's I'm all about getting some more baked goods. I'm gonna go to like three bakeries, get a couple coffees. This. That's my goal. Well, well let's food? give it a try. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> so the treat I got, they called it a boat. And let's preface by saying what Americans call a Danish, like the pastry that we think of as a Danish, don't believe is Danish at all. I'm pretty sure we learned that when we were in Denmark, but it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. This is Danish American and it's puff pastry, kind of in the shape of a Danish. So it has stuff in the middle but it's much bigger, so let's give it a go. 
Does anybody else feel like bakeries like that that have way too many options, their puff pastry all tastes like nothing? Because that's what it, also, can you hear that child screaming? <laughs> that's a, that's another layer to be. It is like Disneyland. It is like Disneyland. Children screaming in the background. You're sticky with sugar. But it's kind of fun, right? Sure. My puff pastry is terrible. The filling's good. The filling's good. Let me try it. I don't like it. Is that bad? I'd skip this one. I wouldn't get this one. Not that great. On to the next one. on Danish streets here in Solvang. We walked over to Olsen's Danish Village Bakery, I think it's called, because that was one that I had heard a lot about, heard that it was good, so we thought, let's try another one, try a few different things. So, we got a box of cookies to go, and then as we were walking by, we passed by this place that had the cutest, most quaint patio, and I was like, what is that? And it's essentially this fabulous wine bar called Aerosmith's. We just met the owners. Yeah, it's super charming here. They're delightful. So, I got a glass of Chardonnay that is local to Santa Barbara. It's, let's see, Le Pechure from 2017. So Again, I don't know necessarily what I'm talking about, but I have decided that I'm going to force myself to try more Chardonnay because it's usually not my favorite, but this one is really yummy. Jordan got some bean water as usual. Yeah, some bean juice as we call it. I got the Americano. Also, I got I got some kind of like uh, chocolate rum ball or something too. So we got cookies in that. So we got a Danish because we had to try. The other one wasn't technically a Danish, so maybe this one will be better. It's cherry because that's my favorite. And then I got, what I, what I am excited about is this. They called Ooh. it an almond cookie. Look how pretty that is. I'm excited about this. This looks good. And then, do you want to try your the little yeah, rumble? Yeah, let's do it. Mmm. Is it soft or is it like crispy? It's soft. It's soft, really. I expected crunchy. It's soft and it's very good. This is, I think, lemon. It's a bottom cookie. It's very bright. You have Can to try it. Yeah, it's really oh. good. It's, it's good, lemon. isn't it? Yeah. Is it raspberry and apricot? Yeah. Yeah, that's good, y'all. I could eat a bunch of those. The chocolate's good. The rum ball. Yeah, let's go ahead and try the Danish, try the Danish and see one. how it is. It's okay. This is the one to get. It's all right. This is delicious. Yeah. Truly, very good. <laughs> okay, friends, indulge me. We're gonna get a little cheesy for a second. Travel teaches us many lessons, right? Today's lesson was slow down, look around, and you'll find something like worth it, even in a place where you're kind of like, Ugh. we got here, it felt like Disneyland, we were overwhelmed, the pastry was bad. <laughs> But we went for a walk and tried to like regain ourselves and we walked by this place, Aerosmith's, on our way to Olsen Bakery. So we stopped, we had a drink, and we got to know the owners, Anna and Tim, and I can't say enough good things about them. First off, you'll have to come here and read their story. It's delightful, highly recommend. Second, their wine selection is amazing and very thoughtful and well done. But most of all, the people here, they were so warm and welcoming and they shared their story with us. And that is what travel is about. Truly, that is what it is all about. So I feel, I just feel good and fulfilled. And Anna and Tim, thank you so much for sharing your story with us and sharing a glass of wine with us. We so appreciate it. And we hope this video finds you. You guys come to Solvang, go to Aerosmith. Have a great time. Let's go get some dinner. All right, y'all, we were on our way to dinner and we noticed just how quiet it was here in the town. And we wanted to walk around and check it out again versus what it was like earlier today. It is 7.42. 7.42. And it, everything's closed except for like bars and restaurants yeah. and not even those are open necessarily. But if you just want to come see the town and just see it, yeah. come take a stroll right before sunset. At golden hour. Uh, yeah, it's golden hour. It's gorgeous. Anyway. We're on our way to dinner. We're gonna round things out here. We're gonna take a beautiful stroll and we will see y'all for Pismo Beach in the next one.